Dating tips 8 to 12. These also double as pretty much red flags. Um, these parts that I'm moving on to now are generally areas where if you see them happening, you kind of just want to save your time, save your energy, move on to a different path and keep going. Dating tip number eight is the toilet. The toilet. Yeah, the place you go, the implement that you use every day for your ablutions, for going uh, for number one uh, or number two, uh, whether it's liquid or solid. Yeah, or maybe you need it to throw up. The toilet. Okay, so what I've noticed is uh, in some past relationships and also in people's households, different people's households that I've known in the past, um, as is a common theme, the men of the household seem to think that domestic, anything in the domestic arena falls to the responsibility of the woman. She may not be doing it all directly, but she is supposed to be directing what happens. This seems to be the general subconscious understanding. The woman needs to be directing the domestic arena. And if she doesn't, then things just fall by the wayside. The toilet being one of them. If your boyfriend or your, let's just say your partner, cannot clean well a toilet that they themselves frequently use, ditch them fast. The reason why is because if they can't effectively clean a toilet that they themselves frequently use, there's something going on in their mind that says to them, it's not their responsibility. It is somebody else's responsibility to do that. It's not within their role to do this. It's within somebody else's role to do this. Maybe it's a woman of the house. Uh, maybe it was their mom before. Maybe it was a, a doting girlfriend or wife or whatever before. But now you're in the picture and it's probably going to fall to you. It means that they think somebody else is going to do it. Deep in their minds, they're conditioned that it's somebody else's responsibility. And if you are in the life, initially in the honeymoon phase, uh, I don't mean in the real honeymoon, I mean in the in the first few weeks months, maybe year that you're with each other, this person um, tr may try harder than they normally would. Maybe they're on best behavior, but you will notice as, as, as time goes by, certain habits kick in, certain default, they revert to certain default settings on certain things. And you need to pay attention to these because these are going to stick around for the long term. If you have your eye on this person for a long term path, long term life path, you need to pay close attention to these. If a person you're with or you're living with cannot effectively clean a toilet that they themselves frequently use, it means that work is largely going to fall to you or they will leave it so long before taking care of this that you with your higher standards of the way things should be will feel obligated to do it or they'll frame it in such a way that something needs to be done about this but they won't look at themselves I've had that happen to me in the past like we were living in a circumstance where we were living together and the bathroom was reaching a certain state of uh, just, you know, the way bathrooms go. And the person I was living with at the time sort of said, no, something needs to be done about this bathroom. Like, something needs to be done. Like, quite critically, he wasn't looking at himself, though. 
and there was a silence in the room. And I was looking at him, and he was looking at me, and I'm like, uh, so are we going to clean it up then? You know, who who's that going to be? Uh, yeah, well, and what I noticed was, he did not want to get his hands dirty. He did not want to get his hands dirty with a toilet that he himself would frequently use. His go-to strategy for if it fell to him and he could not get out of it at all, like I would have to physically say, I would have to physically be the drill sergeant here. I would be like, okay, I'm going to clean it this time. Next time it's your turn. Then it, when it would come round to his turn, you could see he was, he was very like feeling icky about this, feeling icky about this. And he wouldn't actually want to touch the toilet bowl himself or have to go in under the water line with gloves or anything. He would just want to spray in a certain chemical like toilet duck that would just clear the mess all on its own and leave the thing clean. And he wouldn't have to have touched anything with his own hands or even, even with gloves on. He wouldn't have had to do that. It was very icky about this. You need to watch this. Men or anybody who's living in a family situation that is icky about something, it doesn't want to touch it because it's, it may be germ-ridden or, or um, oh, it was messy before, oh, it has had some kind of contact with human substances. Oh, watch these people. Because what happens if uh, you have a baby together? Will they not be prepared to clean up after whatever the baby's producing, whether it's poop or vomit or dribble or whatever. Young human beings are the hugest producers of uh, sticky, messy substances that we're largely going to have to deal with in our whole lives. If they can't, if your partner cannot clean up a mess that they themselves have been using or they are themselves a part of good luck good luck expecting them to be on board with cleaning up anyone else's so, and this applies for babies young children and what about you what about you if you get sick what about you when you become let's just say not so healthy maybe you go through a phase or maybe you're going through a period where you are quite sick and there's nothing you can do about it. You've just got to go through it. You can't circumvent it. You just have to go through it. Maybe you're vomiting. Maybe things are coming out from both ends. Is this person going to have your back? Is this person going to be prepared to clean up after you and for you the way they would expect the treatment for them? Because if they're with you, they're probably used to how careful you are, how diligent you are. And there's a reason why they're with you, because they realize, wow, you can be the diligent one. You can be the one that takes care of all that, all that crap. And I get to live my life free of having to deal with all that crap. Watch this. Watch this very carefully. These little things that people do on the outset. And you think, am I being unreasonable for thinking this? Am I being unreasonable for thinking... This person's not doing enough about this, just this measly toilet thing. No, you are not being unreasonable. You are not being unreasonable at all because you need to factor in anyone else around you. Is it always going to fall to you to clean it up? And what happens if there's a baby or there's a dependent of some sort? Somebody else is sick. Is it always going to fall to you to have to clean these things up? And then what happens if you get sick? What happens if it's you that's making the messes? You that become incontinent. You become, you that uh, you can't control what's coming out of whatever orifice. Is this person going to be able to take care of you? You need to sit with these questions. Because I think we waste a lot of weeks, months, years in our lives on people that we care very deeply for and we care 
in physical um, manifestation, we, we, we show how much we care, but they're not giving that much back to us. And this is not a role thing. This is not like a, oh, as a, as a female or as the d domestic, uh, as not, as a, as the female side of things, you should just naturally t be more of the caretaker. Both sides require care. Both sides require care. It is not like this one requires care and this one is the caretaker. No, they both require care and at some or other point they're both going to need to be caretaker. What is going to happen in this instance? Be very careful of this. Watch them like a hawk about this. If they don't step up to the plate to say, oh, it's my turn, I'm going to do the toilet, or I'm going to do the bathrooms, and if they do a shoddy job, here's the thing, if they do a shoddy job of it, it either means that their standards aren't high enough, but, but here's the thing, many of their standards are very high, very high. If they were to stay, like my ex before, if he were to stay in a hotel, or some, uh, some other place, he would inspect, he would inspect the bathrooms to see, you know, were they clean enough and everything, da, da, da. he had very, very high standards coming from himself about these facilities, about what other people should be doing. But when it came to him, when it fell on him to be pulling his weight about cleaning these things, it was very sort of hit and miss. And I noticed that a lot, like cleaning up the kitchen, cleaning up various things. It was very sort of hit and miss. And what I, what I worked out over time, it was that he was probably doing, he's very smart. He was probably doing this on purpose. Why? Because if he does a slapdash job about it, the female, the woman, the girlfriend character, the, the wife character is going to see this and go, God, I don't want to have to nag so I can see they've done a shoddy job. Maybe they tried, but they did a terrible job. I'm going to do it over again so that it's done properly. And that's what they want. This is what they want because they are training you to be the default person to do this anyway. Because the next time it comes down to them, will they go, oh, you do it better. Or it's assumed that you're going to be the one who does it better. So everything is going to slowly fall to you. This is not good enough. These men are very, very smart. And they know how they would expect things. There's a reason why they hire maids. There's a reason why they have people in. Um, maybe they grew up with their mom doing certain things. And there are, they are used to a certain standard. But they do not think it falls to themselves to have to repeat or reciprocate that standard for others. They're not worth it. Chuck them out as fast as you can. They are not worth it. And would you need to do the training? Would you need to train them? Think about it this way. You think maybe, oh, they just need training. They just need to be taught how to... No, no, they don't. If they are as smart as many of them make themselves out to be, right? You, you can't beat the confidence of some of these males. If many of them are as smart as they make themselves out to be, they would have thought of all of this by now. They would have thought of the reciprocal action. They would have, uh, it would have been in here to pull their weight. But they are conveniently, it's very convenient for them, they are conveniently fulfilling the roles and continuing the roles forward from what, what was going on in the last generation because they think they can, because they think they can get away with it, and because they think you're going to stick around anyway. They assume you will stay. And if you've gotten to the state where you're now married, it's even more of a, a burden, more of a, a huge jump, a huge um, energy input to kind of separate from a person. If it comes down to these things, you can see that they do not value your humanity. They do not value you as a person. They kind of see you as a live-in maid, a uh, domestic worker, plus somebody that they you know, they sleep with at night. Oh, it's all, it's all very good. It's all rolled into one. Why would you leave for something like this, the domestic thing, 
when it doesn't look so bad on the outside? And why would you leave them when it would take such work to restart your life when, when you've realized that it's, it's not going to work anymore? The, uh, many of them come to, many of them assume that you will not want to leave. You will not have a backup plan. You will not have any options because you've got yourself this far. You need to be very careful about getting in that far and letting this kind of thing slide for so long. This behavior needs to be booted fast. Maybe the people are very nice and uh, they're great on many sectors, but if they are doing this at home and they're expecting you to pick up the pieces, they are not that worth it. And it might actually be better to be on one's own than dealing with all of this. Coming home and going, oh, what is it I have to do? You're a whole human being, an adult, and they are too. You do not need to be responsible for them pulling their weight. You're not their mom. They need to snap out of this fast. But I mean, let's just talk about um, messes, for instance, like cleaning up uh, icky, dirty messes, um, dirty jobs, jobs where you have to get your hands seriously messy, sticky stuff, and so on and so forth, bodily fluids, right? Okay, let's just say the issue is, oh, maybe we could just get somebody in to do that for us. Let's just hire someone to come in and do that. No, this is not the answer, and it doesn't solve the issue, and it basically just band-aids. It puts, it pops a band-aid on the issue. It doesn't solve the underlying problem that your partner is never going to do it. Because what happens when the money runs out? And you don't have enough money to pay for that extra service. That person coming in, that extra outside person to come in and clean up all the stuff that you guys don't want to have to do. Maybe you're okay with, with doing it every now and then. But if your partner isn't okay with doing it just as much as you, it means that when the money dries up, when there's no one else around, when there's no other mechanism in place to keep, to clean that up, it's going to be you. It's going to be you time and time again. And if it's not going to be you, then it would probably also mean that you would need to put an inordinate amount of time and energy and emotional, emotional discomfort into asking that person, nagging that person, begging that person to keep up their side of the deal to keep up, just to keep up with what you both should be doing. Do you want to be doing that? Think about it. So yes, really, really watch that. Consider how valuable your life is and how valuable the time in your life is. Um, I always I always think about, um, I, I think it was on TikTok or it was on YouTube or some, some situational story where a man asks you, if I could give you money, but tomorrow I would take that one day away from your whole life, you would have one day missing. How much money would you be willing to accept but in return, I take away one whole day of your life. Would you be willing to accept that? And how much would it be? Now, whatever number you happen to settle for, this shows how valuable even one day of your life is. Are you willing to set aside not just a day, more than days, weeks, months, years of your life to retrain a whole grown-up adult to change their habits in their life so that they can coexist harmoniously with you. How much time 
would you need to invest in doing that? Would it be worth it? And would it stick? Do you have any guarantee that it would stick? And then last question would be, how come they haven't come to these conclusions on their own if they are the intelligent human being that they themselves think they are? You have to ask yourself this. Number nine, they don't heed you. Heed, heed as in uh, really listen to you, really pay attention to you, really regard, take in what it is you're saying. Um, I'm going to give you an example. Um, uh, a few years ago, I was with someone and I would say, I would find out something. I would find out something really interesting. Maybe I read it somewhere. Maybe I got it off the internet or whatever. Okay. And I would come to them and say, wow, I just found out that this, uh, this uh, ABC is true. I just found this out. It's amazing. Don't you think? And this person would disregard it. They would just go, uh, I, I don't think that's likely because in the last few years, something, something else is true. They would just fob it off. Whatever I was saying was not credible enough to take at face value. The fact that I was coming out with this, it, it just didn't matter. The fact that it was me saying it negated its credibility. This is the thing that took me a really, really, really long time to tweak on. And it was kind of hurtful and very painful. It was a painful realization. But yes, the fact that it was coming from me negated or cancelled out how believable it was to my partner. Now you have to think, is this the way things are supposed to be? Are you not supposed to be able to believe each other? Have faith in what the other one is saying? Be supportive of each per of the person's ideas? Because I know for a fact, many men require a supportive female. But they don't seem to think that the female re would require the same from them. Again, the reciprocity is not happening. And the thing that would infuriate me was maybe this conversation would finish and time would move along. Maybe two, one, one, two weeks, three weeks. He would find exactly the same um, piece of information that I had discovered those weeks before. Information ABC. He would discover it and he would be overwhelmed by this and go, wow. He would be in awe of this and he would come to me and go, you know what I just read today? I read that ABC is true. And I'm like, yeah, I mentioned that a couple weeks ago. Do you remember? And then by this time he'd be like, no, 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 I, I don't really remember this. Really? Really? Did you, did you really say that? And I would, at the end of the day, it took a lot of energy. Again, this is all about energy expenditure. It took a lot of energy for me to stand up for myself, for the own, my own little thoughts coming out of my mouth. It took a lot of energy and hard work and just standing, sticking fast, standing by, just doing that to stand up for my own ideas, just to have them exist in the room and not be steamrolled or disregarded or uh, sort of fobbed off. Like, uh, what's the word? There's a special word. Disregard, I think, is the word. Just disregarded. There was a lot of this. Very dismissed. That's the word I need. Dismissed. Just dismissed very summarily. You have to watch this. If, if this, it seems like not a big thing. It seems like not a big thing, but over time, this will wear you down. It will wear you down. It, and because you will become conscious of whatever you think in here, if you say it out here, it will be dismissed because you've noticed the patterns. If this is the case, you will continuously start to self-censor. You will button your own mouth up. 
because it's not worth it to say what you're thinking. And you will start to exist. You will learn to live and exist in an environment where you need to shut up. And they are allowed to extol about whatever. Mansplain, talk about something, something they found about. And you will be expected to listen to them ad nauseum, ad nauseum about whatever little waffling thoughts they have or things that they think that they've discovered. You will be required to do this. Do you want to live like this? Is this, the, is this where you thought your life was going when you were young, when you had dreams for yourself, when you were thinking, what's my life going to be like? Is this what you had planned for yourself? You need to think very hard about this because massive amounts of time are wasted on people that are not worth it. Whole vast reserves of energy, time, and mental focus are poured into these black holes, these black holes that these people create. They are black holes. You are pouring your energy and time into them. And it's not going anywhere. It goes into them. It feeds them. It doesn't feed you. You are going to be, you are going to revert to a dry husk of yourself in a couple of years. And who knows whatever other ailments will, will result from this, from having had to self-censor or button up or, um, or to just, just keep yourself hemmed in. This uh, little drip feed resentment every day that you will build up, will build up inside of you. Maybe they won't see it, but it will build up inside of you and make you sick. Who knows what it could cause in the future? Pay attention to this. When they don't heed you. And uh, number 10 is they don't answer your questions. I think this is linked to the previous one where they don't believe you or they don't heed you when you're saying something. They don't pay attention. They don't really think you've got much to say or they don't. That's not your role for them. I think this is connected to that when they don't answer your questions. Um, in the new dating phase, uh, they would answer your questions. Like if, if you sent them a text message, There'd be an answer like within an hour, right? Like I, I, I don't want to put pressure on people to feel like, no, you need to answer within seconds. You shouldn't be, people shouldn't always be looking at their phones, right? But like within an hour, like if, if you are keen on each other and if, you know, if, if you're not working that particular time and, you know, you're, you're technically on your downtime, within an hour should be okay. Or like, they just say, Within 24 hours, if the person has any feelings for you. Basically, in the, in the honeymoon stage, like, them answering your questions is just part of the course of what's happened. And, and that's, that's why you build up relationship. That's why you, you, things progress and move forward and you build up a relationship with them and you find commonalities, you find things in common. You, so you, it's really exciting, right? And they answer your questions. And there's a back and forth there. But then when it enters a phase where you send a question and they don't answer it, or they don't answer it within 24 hours, it's, it's the death knell. It's the death knell. The bells are ringing. It's kind of over. Well, I don't know, in my, in my experience, because here's the thing, if you really care about someone, you care about their feelings, you care about the way they feel, you're going to value them, you're going to value their time, and if they're sending you a question that sounds like they're feeling anxious about something, or they're worried about something, if you cared about them, you would feel like, I want to put them out of their worry. I want to put them out of their, their negative, anxious thoughts. I want, to, I want to chill them out so that they feel calm and happy, right? If you cared about them. 
But if, if your partner has sent you an anxious question and you are happy to just let that question lie and sit there and rot on the phone or mm, they don't care they don't care that much to answer they don't they don't have the capacity that, that that might be it they don't have the capacity of concern that you have as i've been in that situation before like i i when i first started dating someone they, they they were asking me anxious questions. I could feel I could feel the anxiousness behind and the insecurity behind their questions, and I answered every single one. I answered it happily. I was just like, okay, you know, this is happening, and made made them feel chill and like, no worries, everything's okay. Don't worry, we're we're good. And I could feel at the end of me finishing answering their questions that they were happy and they they felt calm and relaxed and secure. Now you know they, okay, cool. But then further on. I was reaching a stage where I was coming to an anxious point and I would forward an, an anxious question or I would send them in like a question that I was worried about something and the question would just sit there on the phone and I would be like okay two hours going by four hours going by let me just maybe they're busy right okay leave there leave it for them at the end of their work day end of the work day nothing a whole 24 hours goes by on oh, nothing and then you reach the next day they still haven't answered the question or maybe they don't even answer then which it, kind of over isn't it it is it's over or maybe they come in with something like uh, or they'll start talking about something else entirely and they just ignored what whatever it was that you said before they don't care enough they don't care enough they don't I don't know if it, it's whether they have the capacity to or not, but they, they're they just not there. You care more than they do. Are you okay in this dynamic? Are you okay to remain in this dynamic? Yeah. That's, uh, that's the sad thing. That's the sad thing. Yeah. And the, the thing about this, like, I guess you could call it ghosting. It's at the beginning of ghosting, but like selective ghosting. <laughs> selective. If a person can selectively ghost you, like, you know, they're, they're interested in you and you sometimes and other times they'll just let you sit there and like your questions will sit there and rot. They don't care enough about you. They don't care about you the same way that you care about them. And it's time to move on however painful that is or however painful that may or will be it's time to move on so this last one was number 10 10 they don't answer your questions i'm going to make a point now and i'm going to call it 10b if that was 10a this is 10b um they don't ask questions they don't ask you any questions um there's initially a time in the beginning of a relationship where you two are probably sussing each other out. You're probably like really curious about each other. You're trying to work out different, different aspects, like what's this person all about? And um, for a viable uh, couple to start to happen in the future, you're kind of looking at like um this is the job interview stage you're you're gonna be this is the time to be asking each other questions certain questions um this is the time to be doing it if you notice that they're not even asking you questions in the beginning phase of your relationship it means at that stage that they're not really interested or maybe they are interested but only for a certain thing um, further on down the line, let's just say you have been dating already and maybe um, you get to a stage where you realize that they just have no more curiosity about you. Let's just say you know for a fact that they don't, they still at this time don't know you very well 
but there's no curiosity to even venture to get to know more of you. Maybe you're aware by certain things that they say, certain things that they do, that they still don't really know you very well, and they're not even trying to get to know you. Know that this is not going to change. You cannot hope or even plan or even train a person to want to be more curious about you or want to get to know you. This is the way it is. This is how it is. Do not expect it to change. Unless maybe you said something to them. Here's the thing though. Even if you do say something to them, will they not just start to ask you questions out of obligation now? Is that what you want? Do you want them to be asking you questions and to be putting on a show of curiosity about you just because you said so? Just because they want to keep the status quo. They don't want to create ructions, so they're just doing as you asked. If they don't have any curiosity about you, um, or even they're not even asking you about your opinions about anything further on down the line, like maybe they've discovered something or maybe they've read about something or something happened that day and they're no longer asking you, well, what would you do in this situation? Or what do you think about this? It means they don't care about your opinion. Maybe they're just really incurious people, but if you want to be in a relationship where things are growing and changing and you're learning about each other and because relationships are work and they are a work in progress, a constant work in progress. If they're not even willing or if, if, if they're not even curious about you, if that spark of curiosity about you is gone, I'm not sure what would bring it back unless you pressured them and then they started to ask you questions out of obligation. This, this part here. Another aspect of this is they might not be asking questions because they don't care about your answers or they don't care to hear your answers. What I mean by this is they probably already predict what you may say or the line that you're probably going to go down and they don't care to do that. And if this is the case, you need to be asking yourself why are they with you in the first place if they don't see you as someone they can relate to. Like what is your function there? It all depends on basically what you want. If, if you're just okay to have a body in a room uh, that is the opposite of you or it's, uh, it's called a partner and every now and then you say stuff to each other that, that is uh, supposed to mean something or you, you just want a body in the room, in your house, in your life, then, then cool. But if, if you're wanting real connection, uh, these kinds of things, uh, they're important. Uh, you'll also notice like usually when they're not asking you questions on your opinions or on your take on things, there's almost always a direct correlation to how much they are extolling about something, how much they are giving forth or um, holding court about their own opinions and the way they see you is actually as a foil to them. You are there in the life, you are there in their lives to provide the soundboard. You are the sounding board for their ideas. You are the listener to the great ideas that they're having or the insightful observations that they are having. You are the one to be supporting that. That is your role to them. Um, sounding board, foil, or like a, basically the supporting character again. Um, and you have to ask yourself, 
are you okay with this? If you're sort of like a very shy person, the sort of mousy person, that you don't really want to be out there and this absolutely suits you, fine. But you do need to be aware of this if you are wanting give and take here yeah, or some kind of reciprocity. Number 11. They don't respect other people's boundaries or rules. They don't respect other people's boundaries or rules. The reason why is because maybe you think in the beginning that you are exempt from this. The reason is because maybe at this time it is other people's rules and boundaries that they are not respecting. One day it will be yours that they won't be respecting. And it's just, um, if it's not happening now, it is just a matter of time before it is, or before it will. Um, a person who is happy to lie about other people. You think you are exempt and maybe you like this dynamic because at this particular time, you are exempt from it. They're not doing it about you, but they have no problem doing it about other people. One day it's going to be you. One day it's going to be you. One day when you fall out of favor. One day when, you don't, when they don't like you so much. One day when you've had a fight. That kind of thing. If they can lie about other people, they will lie about you. If they can cheat on other people, maybe this is how you guys started. They started because they were cheating on another person with you. You were the, the third entity, the third party, right? If they can cheat on another person, one day they will cheat on you too. If they, any, any kind of behavior, negative behavior that, that they can uh, do upon other people, one day it will come to you. One day it will be you. So actually what you should be doing is watching very carefully how they treat other people. How do they treat the help? How do they treat the staff? How do they treat their friends? How do they treat the people who aren't their friends? Because will you always be friends with them? Will you always be their number one person? Will you always agree? Will you always never fight? You have to think about these things. If they can do it to another person, they're very capable of doing it to you. And maybe what we need to remember is we're not that special. We're not that special that will differentiate us that far from another person. <sighs> Tough, right? Tough realization, but it, it is, it just is. A big step of this for me was I was living with a person before uh, we were living in a different country. And um, this country's rules about how people went to the toilet, the toilet again, how people went to the toilet were different from most first world countries or most Western countries. Me and my ex both come from Western countries and now we are in a maybe a developing nation and they have different rules about what happens in the toilet arena. I'm going to tell you what it is. In Western countries, um, uh, the toilet paper, whatever toilet paper you're using, it's customary to just flush it down the toilet along with whatever else you put in there, right? You flush it down the toilet. The thing is, in many developing nations or other countries, this is not always the case. Maybe they use um, a cup of water to wash things down. Maybe they don't use paper specifically. Maybe their sewage systems, the, the, treat, the water treatment systems are not geared are not prepared or um, implemented enough to be able to deal with large-scale uh, wet tissue coming through there. And sometimes it bungs things up and there's blockages and they need to send people down and unblock things. This is just the way things are in many, many countries. And we were in a country where this was well known. This country deals with a lot of uh, foreign tourists and they know this problem well. So they put up signs near the toilets. They put up signs saying, please do not flush toilet paper 
down the toilet. Please do not do that. They don't explain why, but you know, like this is their rule. This is their boundary. This is their uh, rule that they have for for the sewage system. If we are a guest there, we should we should abide by this, right? We should just listen to them. They are the locals. They know what's going on. We should listen to them. My ex never did. My ex never did. He always just fobbed this off. He dismissed this. He uh, he. Um, it, this was just uh, immediately dismissed. He. It was almost like he thought. These people don't know what they're talking about. These people should have a better sewage system worked out. However, the thing is, this country hosted us for many months. The people were always kind and nice. It was one small thing to ask. One small thing to ask. He couldn't do that. Paper, not down the toilet. Paper in a bag on the side of the toilet. When it's full, uh, tie it up and throw it in the garbage. The paper went down the toilet. He didn't care. He didn't care how it bunged up the system. He didn't care that it would, was affecting probably this, the, the lives of service people in this country. Poor, poor sewage workers would have to be called out somewhere to unblock something. Didn't consider this. Didn't think about it. It just didn't matter to him. This, this country should get itself in line. This country needs to get itself sorted out. They need to sort out their, their sewage system. This isn't good enough. You are a guest here. You should behave accordingly. If they ask you to do something a certain way, you are obliged to do it. The thing is, many of uh, Western people, many first world country people, seem to have this mentality. What, what's going on in their country, the way things are done in their country, should be the way things are done in the country that they're visiting. But the reason they're visiting this country here is because it's different. So therefore, you should respect how this country is doing things differently. And especially if they state it very clearly on a piece of paper in your language. It's not their language, it's for you, for you to read. And then you go and... It drove me nuts. It drove me crazy. But I have noticed this kind of mentality from other first world Westerners living abroad. They will not believe the locals. The locals will tell them a certain prescribed way of doing things. And the Westerner goes and turns to other Westerners and goes, is this the way things are done here? Like, like, it, like the, these people are telling me that, they, that we do things this way. Is that true? Is that really what we do? I've seen this from more than one person, not just my ex at the time. And it drives me crazy. But the thing is, what it boils down to is, if a person can do that with other people, with another group of people, with another country, whatever, another entity, they can do it to you very comfortably. So if you put forward a certain boundary, you put forward a certain thing that you can't abide by, you can't deal with, you want them to stop doing that or you want them to not do that, and they disregard other people's boundaries and rules, Maybe initially they will look, they will make it look they will, like they are listening to you and they're um, following your instructions. Over time, they will begin to disregard them. It's just a matter of time. So watch that. Watch that. Dating tip number 12. Dating tip number 12 is watch them. Are they able to comfortably watch you struggle? Are they able to comfortably watch you struggle? Now what I mean by this is let's just say the two of you, you and your partner or uh, you and your boyfriend, you and your husband, whoever are out somewhere and you're doing something, maybe it's a chore, maybe it's an errand and maybe you're carrying bags, or maybe you're carrying luggage, or there's children involved, and there's the hands need to be holding a lot of things. Someone walking towards the two of you would see you overwhelmed or overwrought with all the bags and children and taking care of them and making sure that everything is together, 
and the husband or the partner or the boyfriend is off to the side not doing much maybe he's just looking at his phone maybe he, he doesn't have anything in his hands it basically to the outside observer it is very 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 clear that you are doing far more than he is and he is happy and blithe and comfortable in this situation where it is very clear that you are overwhelmed by the load or and overwrought maybe you're tired maybe it's very clear that you're tired and you need help but he's not stepping in to do this this is probably one of the most important ones I'm, I don't know actually if maybe I'm the kind of person that keeps attracting these kinds of people that just have no empathy and just don't see that you're overwrought and overwhelmed or tired and overworked. They just don't see it and they just let you keep doing it. And my, I think maybe my thought at the time was that it's going to get better. He's a smart guy. He'll realize, no, no, they don't realize. If they're doing that on default and they're a supposedly smart human being, it's too much energy. It is energy down a black hole. You are going to be pouring energy down a black hole to train them to do otherwise. And then when they're tired or, or they're, you know, they're having a bad day, they're just going to revert to the way they were before, right? Is this the person you want? Is this your person that you have in your corner? Another thing that I used to think about, one of my exes, um, he was also very much like this, like surprised. He was surprised that I would ask him for help. Or he'd be like, uh, if I asked him to do something, he, he, would, he would say to me, is it, is it too much to ask that you, 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 just, you just get on with it, you know? Is it, is it too much to ask? That's the kind of thing that he would say. And the same person was the kind of person that would go to gym every other day to build up the biceps, build up the arms, build up the back. It was a certain day was legs day, right? But couldn't be asked to help me a little bit more. When I, it was very clear that I was overworked and overwrought and overwhelmed with, with things to do. Couldn't get up and help me, but would spend maximum amount of time at the gym, flexing and building up for the gym. Like, what's the point? If, if you're at gym and you're working for all the muscles, what are the muscles for? If not to help your people at home and, and the people in your midst. It's just for show? It probably is just for show. And then if, if you're in the same situation that I was, I think if it is very clear that he's building up a whole image of muscles and strength and everything, but couldn't be asked to help you with the workload, you are looking at someone who's shopping around for other options. And you are a stepping stone or you are meantime material, sort of plan B, plan B girl, plan B wife. You're not the real thing. I don't know. This is just where my mind went anyway. So yes, that was a, this is quite a negative one, but I don't look at it very kindly. And if you see it uh, in your midst and in your circles, I'd say, say something about it because guys get away with so much and girls don't seem to have had the conditioning or, or even the upbringing to think that they can say something about this. I think one of the kickers with that ex that went to the gym before was we were at home and uh, they, uh, him and my daughter would be sitting on the couch playing games or something. And I would be around doing household chores. And, um, and every now and then, I, I, I think my ex thought that he was doing work by playing games with my daughter. But this, this is a downtime activity, like in my mind, and I even, I brought this up a few times with him. I was, I, I always said, dude, like when we get home, can we like just do all the things together and then relax so that we can all relax together? But I was always doing 
I always wound up doing far more than he did. And then he just decided, okay, he's done enough now. He's going to sit down and, and play games now. With, with no, like, no talking to me about it. Just, just, just did that. And I would walk past him and just sort of look at him. And then he'd look at me and smile. This is what I'm talking about. A person who can comfortably watch you when you're tired and doing far more than they are. And it's already been agreed upon what you should be doing. It talks about empathy levels. And um, another ex of mine, um, at a much earlier stage, a few years ago, um, I remember realizing with this guy that there was an, an, empath an empathy level issue. An empathy level issue with this guy he was comfortably able to watch me in exhaustion and just expected me to continue, just to keep going. I remember we were up one time and he'd started to talk about something and it was really late and I had work the next day. I don't know that he did. I think I probably had work the next day. But I was exhausted. And I mean, with me, if I get tired, you can see it in my eyelids. My eyelids start to droop. And um, my voice becomes croaky. And um, it's just really obvious. I, I show the signs of exhaustion really, really obviously. I think I might have even been sitting like this. But I could, I was saying to myself inside my head, it is so obvious that I am exhausted. Why is this guy not letting me go to sleep? This was my partner. This was my boyfriend. He, I was in front of him in, in a state of absolute exhaustion. And he just kept talking. Whatever was in front of him about me just didn't matter to him. He didn't register. I mean, I could have said something at the time. I think I, I just felt a sense of awkwardness for some reason and I didn't. But I was really waiting for him to realize this. And he just didn't. Eventually, I was so desperate. I was like... Buddy, I have to go to bed. And even then he kept going. Empathy? Was there any? I don't know. And I feel that on a certain level from many men, they are so used to seeing, maybe their moms when, they're, when they were growing up at home, they are so used to seeing women struggle on their own with no one helping them. And everyone else around the house just, you know, doing whatever. But the mom or the girlfriend or, or the, the main female figure in that, in that home or that family, just quietly struggling on her own. Maybe there's been such a thing where they've just been seeing this as they grow up that it's just become normal to them. And then when that becomes you, why would they help you? Because of what they've always seen before right? I'm not letting them off the hook about this. I'm just trying to, um, I'm trying to understand myself, how someone would get to this, this level of behavior of, of seeing someone or someone they supposedly love or care about who is struggling with something, who is overwhelmed, who's tired and just see them and absolutely happy to let them go on with it. It might be conditioning, it might be upbringing, it, it might be the attitudes from the previous generation. But if you are going through this, it's not okay. Especially if that is another whole grown-up adult who's able to conduct themselves and they have time and energy. Why are they not helping you? This is not a partner. This is not a partner. A partner is someone where you're working together. You're doing things together to get done, right? If this was two companies and the one was always doing more than the other, the situation wouldn't work. It would cave, right? And it's the same thing. It's, it's all about energy. I've, I've said this before. It's all about bodies of energy in physics. If the one is always doing more than the other, the system's going to fail. It's unsustainable. Yeah, watch that. Okay, so now as a wrap up, as a conclusion, I would say that with all these dating tips, at the heart of it is self-regard. Respect yourself. Respect yourself enough not to take 
not to let let people take advantage of you and and men men as well like the the more like i'm 44 and i've been dating for like a million years um i've never been married but i've been in relationships and i've dated and i've been single and then i've dated again what i've learned is that no one's got it right no one's got it right men, women are confused about things and men are definitely confused men are very very confused creatures even though they act very sure about themselves even though they they come across as very confident and and knowing about things and um very very a lot of them come across as entitled and everything and i think women accept all that as a, a, a sign of confidence or he knows what he's doing there's no guarantee of that and they're not even sure how they understand themselves and with their upbringings as well and their understandings of of roles and their role in things and women's role in things and how that's all changing these days nobody knows what's going on but that doesn't mean you at any point need to let people walk over you let men take advantage of you or take take advantage of your good nature if you're kind if you're empathetic if you're hard working you're going to find that these kinds of people will find you so that you can facilitate their lifestyle. It's not up to you to look after another fully grown human being. It's not up to you. You need to live your life. Probably the best thing that you can probably do is sort out what it is that you want in your life, who you want in your life and what you want to be doing. So that other people don't see the vacuum of ideas and go, ah, oh, I can use this person for, my, for a supporting role in my life. You, I, I can be the main character and you can be the supporting role. Come on, we have to have other ways of thinking about our own lives besides this. And I think what a lot of us do to ourselves is we assume that we need to actually be in a relationship in the first place. We need to be part of a couple or we need to be part of a nuclear family. One of the biggest, I think, mistakes or just a waste of time, waste of life for me has been assuming that as a single mom, I needed to get a partner who could be a father figure to my child. I was, I felt emotionally cornered by this. There's a million different ways of existing in the world and the nuclear family or the happy romantic couple, it looks very nice from the outset. Uh, marketing is fantastic about the way it's represented. But it's not always happy families and happy couples on the inside. Very frequently you have people who are in um, couples and nuclear families who actually wish that they could get out. But the people on the outside are thinking that they would like to get in that state. And in fact, if I think about it, the loneliest I have ever felt in my life has been when I've actually been with people or I've been in a couple that just wasn't working. There's, yeah, just remember that there's a million ways of existing in the world and in these, these prescribed dynamics are not the only ones. Maybe there's even the possibility of living in a group or living in a commune, you know. I've often thought, what would it be like if I could live in a group with other women and their kids, sort of matriarchal society like the elephants? I mean, you're not dissing the dudes. They can, they can do whatever they like off on their own thing and you guys can hang out, but they don't live with you. Because that seems to be where the issues arise. Anyway, just a thought. I do have another video out uh, coming soon called Single Moms. Um, you may want to watch that too because that leads on from this one. 
all the best of luck in your endeavors out there and with people and remember don't sell yourself short we've been doing it for too long don't do it <laughs>